everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Brie and if you're new here, hi, hello, welcome. Otherwise, if you've been around for a little bit, nice to see you again. So today I am really excited to talk about the books that I am most anticipating in 2020. So some of these are going to be sequels, some of these are just new books that authors that I really love are putting out, and there's a kind of a few honorable mentions of things that I might not, I'm not sure if I would actually get to or just might not read the books beforehand because there's a few sequels that I want to be able to read up into but I don't know I'm gonna get them so without further ado let's just jump into all the books that I'm excited for coming out in 2020. The first book I want to talk about is Come Tumbling Down by Seanan McGuire. This is the fifth book in Seanan McGuire's Wayward Children series. It's pretty popular on booktube. I actually started the series because of a lot of booktubers talking about this, but I absolutely love them. They're extremely quick, easy reads, and there is four out currently. The next one comes out January 7th, and I'm not even sure what the premise is going to be about, and I'm not going to look it up because I just kind of like going into those ones blind. But if you never read the Wayward Children series or really haven't heard much about it, essentially they are short novella length books about 150 to 250 pages in length all of them so far are kind of within that range and they follow children who are from our world but have found a door that leads them into some other worlds you know a lot of times people talk about you know they find the door to Narnia or they find you know the brick wall to Hogwarts kind of thing even though Hogwarts is in our world they find different things that enter into all of these fantastical realms that are very much unlike ourselves. So the wayward children um, come back to our home and when they're just really distraught that they can't be back where they're, they went and found their door from, they get sent to this home where they kind of try to adjust back to normal life. Or some of them end up finding their door again and go off back into their the world they found. That was a very shoddy description, I'm sorry. <laughs> but the series I think is always really interesting. Um, like I said, there's four out so far, and I definitely think the first and the fourth books are my favorite so far, but I really enjoy just kind of like the poetic, flowery idea of all of the series. They're very short, so it, it's sometimes hard to connect to the characters, especially if people really like more in-depth, but I like just kind of getting that slice of life feel for the characters that we're introduced about, <clears throat> we're introduced to. Essentially, um, each book pretty much takes each book follows one particular character and their story so like I said I don't exactly know what come tumbling down is about I don't know if it's going to be about a character that's already been introduced in the previous novels or if it's a new one entirely but either way I'm excited and that's one of the first ones that come out in a year and I'm definitely gonna buy it because I'm pretty sure I pre-ordered it already the second book that I am looking forward to getting is Seven Deadly Shadows by Courtney Alameda and Valen Maitani. Might have butchered that name and I'm really sorry if I did. I think I'm pretty good with it. I'm pretty good with names um, and I'm just referencing it just so I don't butcher it too bad. But Seven Deadly Shadows comes out on January 28th by these two authors and it's kind of like a Japanese inspired retelling of sorts. As I'm reading here on Goodreads, um, basically, I, it sounds like she is a per, a girl, I follow as a girl in our world, and um, ends up trying to fight these yokai demons in Japanese lore. So I'm not going to waste too many too much time explaining it myself, just because I personally don't want to know too much about it, but I mean, Japanese lore and um, somewhat of a retelling, I'm kind of excited just because I really like Japanese culture, and it kind of sounds like a kind of like an anime almost from the quick description that's on Goodreads and I really like the type of the way that it's described is the type of anime that I really like so I'm kind of curious and just looking for something for something different in the year 2020 so I am looking forward to that that is a young adult novel so the third novel on this list is one that I'm not really sure how I feel exactly about it yet and I'm not sure if I'm excited I'm gonna put it on this list just because but that would be the first book in the Crescent City series by Sarah J. Mass, which is House of Earth and Blood. This is her newest adult novel, even though I'm pretty sure half her novels could be considered adult if looked at by other people. <laughs> but this is going to be fully adult and it's also an urban fantasy where it's taking place in the Crescent City, I'm pretty sure. Crescent City is a real place, I'm pretty sure it's in California. 
So I'm pretty sure this is like taking part in that city, but there is Faye involved because it's Sarah J Mass. Why wouldn't there be Faye involved? I'm a little, I don't know how I'm going to feel about it. I've, I'm kind of um, hit or miss with Sarah J Mass's work because I can really get behind some of her story and like the idea of what she wants to present, but I'm not always a fan of how the story plays out and how she writes all of her scenes and characters and that kind of stuff. Um, sometimes it just leaves a poor taste in my mouth and I can be really engrossed in something and then also just hate everything I'm reading. So I feel like that might be the same with this book, but I'm interested, especially because it's urban fantasy and I am kind of, I feel like she might be able to do a good job kind of creating the real world and putting it with her fae. So I don't know if I'm going to buy this one. Honestly, I might rent it from the library and just see, you know, what the hype is about. And if I really do like it, I'll just go buy a copy. But I have actually unhauled her entire Throne of Glass series and I kept the uh, Court of Thorns and Roses series for now. Uh, and we'll see if I end up ever getting rid of them, but I, I kind of liked that a little bit more than the Thorn of Glass, so I feel like right now, anyway, I'm rambling. I'm, I'm going to put this on this list. I am kind of interested in reading it. I just don't know if I will actually spend the money up front on it, but we'll see. Hopefully I will check back in with you guys sometime throughout the year, and we'll see if I actually get to any of these books, right? Okay. House of Earth and Blood comes out on March 3rd, so... Uh, sometime after March I will let you guys know if it is any good and worth checking out. The fourth book on this list of things that I am excited for is Incendiary by Zareda Cordova. So Renata Convida is uh, the heroine of the story and she is like kidnapped by the crown and forced to kind of or she ends up learning to be a whisper which is kind of like a group of spies. Um, I think they're rebels though, that they're kind of in the underground trying to work against the king. It might be, it sounds like it might be a kind of revenge plot in a way, but also has magic. And I'm really excited because personally, I absolutely love Zareda Cordova's work. So far, I've only read her, the first two books in the Brooklyn Bruja series, which was um, Labyrinth Lost and Bruja Born. So, and I cannot roll my R's, so I'm very sorry because I know it's not actually the way you say that word <laughs> in Spanish, but... Bria Born is the second uh, second book and Incendiary is a completely new novel that she's coming off with and I'm just very very excited. I did try to request an arc for it but I know they were limited and I one has not shown up on my door so it'd be but I'm still very excited. That comes out in um, April 2020. I couldn't find an exact date yet but I probably am going to pre-order that as well because I love her. I've also met her in real life and I just think she's a wonderful person and she had so much insight and she's just very, uh, very enjoyable to talk to. So I will probably pretty much support her in any way possible just because I think she's a wonderful human being. Incendiary is the first in a series. I don't know how many books there is scheduled to be, but it is called the Hollow Crown series. So I'm expecting at least a trilogy. That seems to be what she's been doing so far. Um, she also has a male focused mermaid story so a merman story that has three books in it as well it's called the first book is the vicious deep that is on my list to read in 2020 because again i really like her and i wanted to support her that's her first series that came out i also know she has a star wars book too so anyway without getting off track incendiary in april 2020 is the next book i would like to get to the fifth book that i want to get to is probably no surprise given my age and the time the hunger games come out but on may 19th the ballad of songbirds and snakes by suzanne collins comes out and of course i have to read it because i actually really love the hunger games this is actually all pretty much all year i've been wanting to reread the hunger games and in the midst of my like i want to reread it the ballad of songbirds and snakes snakes was uh publicized that they were going to be making it. So I was like, wow, now I really should reread The Hunger Games <laughs> because as I get older, I feel like The Hunger Games, I can read it in a completely different light. And I actually think I'll like it more reading it as an adult. So I want to kind of like experiment with myself and just see if it is true that if I feel like I will appreciate some of the um, author intent and stylistic choices that she made that I didn't appreciate as a teenager slash, you know, young 20 year old because I wanted them to have a happy good ending and it didn't happen so I'm interested but I um I believe this story is gonna follow Mags and I want she was one of my favorite characters and Catching Fire especially because she was 
Uh, it was one of my favorite, well, that was my favorite book of the series. So I'm just very excited to see um, her entire story because I always felt that there was more to her than The Hunger Games was able to give. So, of course, I have to read that book and I'll probably pre-order that one too. The sixth book that I'm very excited for in 2020 is My Calamity Jane by Brody Ashton, Cynthia Han, and Jody Meadows. This trio that they call themselves collectively the Lady Janies have been writing kind of retellings of famous Janes in history. So I first learned about this series when I got Owl Crate probably back in 2016, maybe 20, probably 2016, maybe 2017, but they had my late, my Lady Jane, my Lady Jane, um, which was a retelling spin on the uh, Lady Jane Grey, who had only seven days worth of uh, being crowned before she was killed. I believe she was beheaded <laughs> in real life. So that book kind of takes that story and twists it with magic. So in that story, there are shapeshifters. And it's just kind of really interesting because there's a lot of actual history in that book that really happened. But the way that it's retold is kind of, you know, through different lenses and with this magic twist. And it was just so fun and hilarious. And I absolutely had such a fun time reading it. And then after that one, they had My Fair Jane, which was a Jane Eyre retelling. And obviously Jane Eyre is a fictional character, but the way that they twisted that one was that they had Jane Eyre was like a real person or, and she might've had a different name. I can't quite remember in that book. Jane Eyre was a person in real life who ended up being friends with Charlotte Bronte and kind of gave her the inspiration to write Jane Eyre. And in this book in particular, there is a ghost twist to it. So it's kind of paranormal and they have ghosts that uh, do anything and kind of, you know, mess things up for the main characters. It, again, very fun, very funny. And I really personally like the sidebars because the authors will throw like little sidebars and notes into the book. So you'll be reading, 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 and then you get their commentary. I actually really liked that. I know some people might have more of an issue with it, but it just reads so perfectly. And I actually read the second book on audio and it was a fantastic narrator. So I think either way, if you have a chance to grab those books in audio or uh, hardback format, go do it because they're really great. So anyway, getting to this, My Calamity Jane, which comes out June 2nd, is about Calamity Jane and uh, Annie Oakley, two famous, you know, US, United States gunslingers uh, back in some time in history because I'm really bad at history. Someone can let me know below when this actually took place. But Again, it's gonna be a twist on their story, and I'm not really sure what the twist on it is yet. If they're, you know, if it's gonna be like magical or paranormal or something like that, I'm not sure. But uh, I'm just really excited about it. The cover is absolutely stunning, and again, I'm just looking forward to kind of getting back into that humor because there's not enough humorous books that I read in my life. So number seven is coming back to an author I already mentioned, and that would be Zareta Cordova, and she is coming out with her third in the Brooklyn Brouillard series, which is Wayward Witch, and that comes out August 1st. So this series is going to tie up the trilogy, and in Labyrinth Lost, you know, there's there's three sisters introduced in Labyrinth Lost, and you each of those books are following one of those sisters. So by this point, the, the all the sisters are witches. And they live in Brooklyn and they're so that's also kind of an urban fantasy where they have magic they practice magic daily and you're just following this kind of slice of life of these three witches so we're following Rose I believe in the third book and she is the youngest sister and just coming into her powers so I'm just very excited it's a really good series and it's kind of lighter than some of the other fantasy books that I read so I'm just looking forward to that coming out August 1st on September 1st, the eighth book on my most excited list comes out, and that would be Blood and Honey by Shelby Mahurin. If you watched one of my other videos, I might have been posted right before this one goes out, I'm not sure, but I recently just finished Serpent and Dove, and I absolutely loved it. <laughs> so I was reading it previously in a different video, I'm pretty sure, and I finished it by this video, and it was perfect. I know I've heard a little bit mixed feelings, like some people thought it was kind of boring. I was kind of in the mood for a historical fiction, but not a straight historical fiction, and that came to me at the perfect time. So I am so excited for the sequel, Blood and Honey, which comes out in September. Um, I can't give too much away, but basically uh, Serpent and Dove follows a witch 
named Louise, and a Chaucer, which is a witch hunter in the time in France. And uh, the witch and the witch hunter kind of end up forming an unlikely alliance because they are forced into a marriage and they're not really sure why. I love how Shelby constructed this book and took like the real elements of the French witches and the lore and weaved them into her own story and I really like all the little threads that started coming together by the end of the book and how it really shaped how the second book is going to start. So very very excited for that. I know she just posted on Instagram that she was finishing up her edits for the book and oh just so excited guys. So. Uh, you probably might see that in one of my wrap-up videos for the year. Hint, hint. So the next three books that I'm very excited for have no official date, and I don't even know if they're actually going to come out in 2020. According to Goodreads, its intended publication is 2020, but we'll see if that actually happens. So I kind of kept them at the bottom of my list. The first one I'm going to talk about is the second book in the Nikolai duology by Lee Bardugo. The Nikolai duology started off with King of Scars and it's a continuation from the Grisha trilogy and Six of Crows so I can't really say too much about what happens because you really need to read both of those series in order to understand what happens in Nikolai duology. But essentially it follows three of the characters from the first two series. You have Nikolai who is a prince. You have Zoya who is a very powerful magic wielder and I'm blanking on the type of magic she is but she's very powerful and she deals with the wind I believe or the water I can't remember I'm clearly the biggest fan ever <laughs> and then you follow Nina who has uh, another sort of power from the first trilogy uh that you kind of learn more about in the second one or in Six of Crows so you follow those three characters and I wasn't as impressed with the first book as I thought it was going to be, I was so excited for it and it definitely let me down. But I'm hoping that the three storylines will come together in the second book to really wrap it up nicely because otherwise I'm probably going to be super disappointed. But until I know when it actually is coming out and for, I have a feeling that one might end up getting pushed off till 2021, I'm not sure. But for now, I'm going to be excited if it actually comes out in 2020. The next book in that same vein is the fourth book in the Akatar series by Sayer J. Mass. Very similar to what I said about the Crescent City book. Um, after I read A Court of Thorns and Roses, I, I liked that first book. And then I read A Court of Mist and Fury, and I really liked that as well. And then A Court of Wings and Ruin happened, and I thought it was the, <laughs> the most boring book I've ever read in my life. I was not a fan. I didn't think the war and the tactics and everything that was talked about were realistic and I get that it's a fantasy but I felt like there was just no thought put into it and it was just so many it was just cheese fest after cheese fest and I was really ready for to be done with that so then a quarter of frost and starlight like the novella that was supposed to tie the bridges to both books happened and needless to say I was not impressed but I'm here I'm in it for the long haul okay so I'm gonna read the fourth book in this whole whatever you call it a series or whatnot but that's also rumored to be coming out in 2020. I'm just not sure there is no publication date. There's no name yet. So we'll just see how she's doing. Um, you know, with her other book coming out, maybe she is working on it and it'll be announced later in the, or earlier in the year of 2020. But if not, then I'll just keep waiting. No big deal. <laughs> the last book in this same vein is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. This is about a girl who wants to live forever. So she makes a deal with the devil and when that deal goes through there is kind of a catch where the devil puts a, a curse on her where she will live forever but everyone she meets will forget about her the premise sounds extraordinary i've also uh i really liked the severity books that she had out which was the savage song and our dark duet so i just feel like this might also be something of interest to me I have not read any other books from her and I'm pretty sure <laughs> one of the most famous series, two of the most famous series really on booktube, I have not gotten to. But I own both of them so maybe 2020 will be the year I finish those series too. Um, I have a lot of books I own guys and I haven't read a lot of them. Don't come at me. But yeah I'm excited for that book it sounds really good so we'll just see if I actually end up getting to it if it comes out. Um, 
I, it sounds like it might be a standalone. And if it is a standalone, I'll be more tempted to read that one sooner than later because it's a standalone. So the next couple books, uh, to finish up this list of things that I'm excited for, really depend on if I can read what comes before them. So the first on that list is the fourth book in the Ember and the Ashes series. I think this would be the last one, but I don't know. That is going to come out on June 1st. And I have read the first book in that series this year. No, no, last year. I read it last year in 2018. I don't know what I'm doing. It's been a really long time since I read that book now. <laughs> it's been a year, but I really loved it. I just never ended up continuing with that series after I read the first one because I kept getting interested in other things and I'm a mood reader. So like once I pick up one book and I'm interested in it, I keep reading it so that I don't lose interest. So I own the second two books, the well, second and the third book because I really like the first one. My goal would be to finish that so then I can just binge them all and read the fourth one when it comes out. So I'm gonna, I only put that as a maybe I'm excited for it because if I don't get to the other books, then I can't really be truly excited for it. But it is kind of on this list. The next book that I'm going to honorably mention is another one where I own this series and it has been something I really wanna get to. And there's a new book coming out in that world. So the series I'm talking about is Girls of Fire, Girl of Fire and Thorns by Ray Carson. This was a book that came out a little, I think early 2010s now, 2011 maybe. And I own the first book. I'm sorry. I own the second book <laughs> because I think my husband grabbed me the second book, not realizing that, you know, I didn't have the first one. And um, my friend has always told me that it's one of her favorite series of all time. And I just have been wanting to get to it. But because I keep forgetting I don't have the first book, it's not something I've been gravitating towards because I have to go out and buy the first book. And when I'm out, I always forget to buy it. But Ray Carson has another book that's supposed to be like a standalone in this world. They're dubbing it Fire and Thorns number four, but I don't know if it really is like a continuation. I think it's more of like a sequel kind of thing. I could be wrong. Let me know down below what the deal is. But that's called an em The Empire of Dreams. And like I said, I'm just putting it on here because that might be more motivation to get through the original trilogy so that I can read it because it's a beautiful cover and it says on Goodreads it's a standalone in this world. So that's another thing of, you know, I'll get some of the books that I wanted to read done as well as have a nice standalone as a reward. And the last book I'm going to mention on this list is a sequel to The Gollum and the Ginny, which is by Helene Wecker. Um, this book was recommended to me in college and I just never read it. Uh, it's kind of, I think like a, well, it's an adult novel about literally a golem and a ginny who kind of I think they're trying to find their purpose in life and then also kind of realize that their destiny is kind of entwined and that they're like made for each other or something like that I'm not sure I think that's kind of what it is and I'm pretty sure it's also set in our world so it's like a historical fantasy fiction type of thing um but even though it was recommended to me years and years ago I actually own this book now and it's been quite a long time I mean the author, I believe, came out with this book in uh, 2013, I want to say, which would make sense because I graduated in 2014. So probably right, at least somewhat accurate. <laughs> um, and it's uh, it's been seven years since a sequel. So to be honest, I, w I didn't even know there was a sequel until I was kind of putting this list together. And I was like, oh, maybe that's one of those things I'll pick up next year because, you know, Spoiler alert for a video coming up. One of my goals is to get through some of the bigger books I've been putting off because big books intimidate me. So I'm trying to get through some of those next year so I could finally say, oh, they're not that bad at all if I like them. But again, honorable mention. Um, I, I think it's definitely something I would like, especially given that I've been really enjoying the historical fantasy I've been reading. So we'll see how that goes. But anyway, guys, there was my long-winded list of books that I'm excited to read in the year 2020. Let me know down below if you have any of these books that I mentioned on your list to read for next year. And what is the book that you are most excited to read in 2020? So anyway, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.